to me, time is the greatest gift that we are given in this life. Time spent with family and friends, time spent celebrating success or navigating through failure, happy times, times of hardship. There's one thing for certain is that no time is guaranteed. Today, I'd like to share with you all what awakened inside of me, leading me to start the nonprofit Big Sky Bravery, in which due to the elite and current sensitive nature of the fighting forces we give back to, our organization probably shouldn't exist. Speaking of time, did you know that America is still at war? In fact, our nation has been at war since September 11th, 2001, which remains the longest active war in American history. Last year alone, America's most elite special operations units, hereafter referred to as SOF, conducted missions in roughly 76% of the nations on this planet. Think about that. Other statistics about these individuals? SOF makes up just 2% of the armed forces. Operators with approximately 15 years of service may have been deployed up to 14 to 15 times during this time frame while conducting thousands of direct action missions. 85% of these operators experience significant traumatic brain injury just from training alone. Unfortunately, some of the soft units we work with have a 90% divorce rate. And the average operator is deployed and or training almost 280 days out of the year. If that wasn't enough, I'm going to further discuss with you today why this matters, who my personal hero is, and why we Americans need to be extremely aware and very proactive in supporting this community. I grew up in a small town in Montana called Three Forks. My parents, amazing, hardworking, blue-collar Americans. We scraped by financially, and I knew I didn't want to take that same career path in my life. So many, many, many careers later, uh, let's see, I was a, a PE teacher, a maintenance worker. Uh, I was an orthopedic sales uh, device consultant. I worked for Mercedes-Benz. Those are just some of them. I found myself in the fall of 2012, living in New York City, making my wife's dream of living in the greatest city on earth come true. And to me, this is really where my career started. I remember getting off the subway my first day of work, scared to death of everything that was going on around me. I kept thinking, am I smart enough for this? Can I do it? Do I actually have what it takes to succeed here? And let me tell you something, that that first job was an amazing stepping stone, as I literally got fired five months after I started. (laughs) I know. I couldn't sell the product. I couldn't keep up with the hustle of the city. I kept telling myself, what a failure you are, Josh. What a joke you are. Well, if I fast forward eight months after that, I would get a phone call that would change my career. My new boss called and he said, Josh, we'd love to hire you to run our business development department. He asked how much money I wanted to make. I told him, and in true New York fashion, he said, done. I was making more money than I ever had at this time. We weren't worrying about bills. We could take nice vacations. We could go out to dinner wherever we wanted. And I guess that the majority of you who are listening or watching might, have thought, might think that this would have been a time of contentment for me. But perhaps hitting these successes made me start to, to be more aware or awakened about my brother-in-law, Jeremy, who at that exact same time was returning from his 14th straight deployment, all in special operations. I was chasing money, using that as my happiness, and Jeremy's deploying constantly, keeping our nation safe and free at this time. The look on Jeremy's face when he came back from that 14th deployment, (laughs) it was all that I needed. The dude was tired, He was stressed. He was hurting. My brother-in-law was burned out. So I knew that deep down I had to do something not only for him, but for the soft community as a whole. And in turn, I guess for myself. 
This next part is really hard to talk about because it's extremely personal. Um, during this time frame, my wife and I were, were going through a, a, a rough spot in our marriage. And like I said earlier, I was chasing money. I was, I was paying way more attention to my career than I was to her. And um, we were fighting constantly about what the next chapter of our life was going to look like. And after one of these frequent big fights, I left our apartment and I went to my quiet place, which is a cigar club in the heart of Midtown Manhattan. And I brought my laptop for some reason. Well, after I sat down, I, I just awakened, right, I guess. I began to think of all that was going on in my life and my brother-in-law, Jeremy. And I started to type out this new idea, this new vision called Big Sky Bravery. So that special operations veterans, okay, hence veterans here, could decompress in Montana after their time in service. Well, it wasn't until I started to do research about this idea that I found America at, the, at that time already had over 45,000 nonprofit organizations dedicated to veterans. So I guess you, say, you can say I had an epiphany to do something for those who are still going overseas. Those carrying the brunt of the workload those at the tip of the spear, those who never left, those who carry out our nation's most covert and sensitive missions. Jeremy. I called him right then, and I said, Jeremy, what's your current unit doing to help? He told me, he said, uh, they're, uh, they're taking us to an NBA game in a few months. <laughs> I can't believe that. We have, we have amazing chaplains in our unit, they have faith-based retreats for uh, our wives and I that no one really goes to for some reason. And we also have counselors in our unit. But a lot of us don't want to talk to them for the simple fear of getting kicked off our team. So I pitched Big Sky Bravery and I said, what do you think? And he goes, Josh, man, I'm telling you, if you can pull this off, it will change the tide for the special operations community indefinitely. So I went back home that same night, and I got in the shower, I guess, to rinse that nasty smoke off. And uh, my wife was using my laptop at the time. Uh, and smart me, I forgot to close the window out for this new idea called Big Sky Bravery. Well, I'm in the shower, and she yells, she says, Josh, what is, what is Big Sky Bravery? I took a deep breath, I got out of the shower, I thought this was going to be the end of us. She thought that she was, she was going to think that I planned this entire life without her. Instead, she looked at me with, with tears in her eyes. And she said, is this, is this for Jeremy? I said, yeah. My wife said something right after that that I will never forget the rest of my life. She said, let's do it. We quit our jobs a few months later, literally risking everything to give back to those who give so much to us. This was our most pivotal moment. So fast forward, I've, I find myself, my wife and I, in the, in the fall of 2015, now living in Bozeman, Montana, trying to create this idea called Big Sky Bravery with no income and a really, really high burn rate of cash. I would meet with anyone who would listen, anybody. Anybody. And it wasn't until about seven months after we moved back to Bozeman that I finally secured funding for our first ever task force, which is what we call our programs. I remember, to say that I was nervous watching these, these operators get off the plane is an understatement. I was shaking in my boots. I remember seeing them for the first time, grown men, covered in tattoos, physically superior, America's quiet professionals. You know, as, as the week went on, I saw a barrier up the size of the Great Wall from these guys. But as the week progressed, I finally started to see the effects of war wear off on them. We finished that week with a farewell ceremony that literally brought tears to every single person in that room. Here's a picture of some of these individuals from TF1 back in March of 16. I knew that we were onto something after the farewell ceremony. But it wasn't until I heard from a special operations wife, 
later on that it really started to come together for me. She called and she said, Josh, I'm going to be super open, very honest. Let me speak. I said, oh, uh-oh. Right? She said, I don't know what the hell you did to my husband when he was out there, but keep it up. I'm finally seeing that spark in his eye and that smile that attracted me so many years ago. Let me just put it this way, she said. My husband came out there on one of his two weeks of block leave. And I would rather have him here with me 100% emotionally and mentally for one week than 0% for two. I want to thank Big Sky Bravery for not only saving our marriage, but for saving him. At Big Sky Bravery, we, we base our success off of three core principles under what we call the give more than you take philosophy. I'm going to share those with you now. Number one is the value of high adrenaline-based recreational activities. Think of it as skiing a double black diamond. We call this the freedom of thought, which are activities that require these operators to think about the task at hand. That's it. The second is solidifying the trust between civilians and members of America's most elite special operations units. Third and final, super important, their value of self-worth. We focus on the individual, not the job. More importantly, what did life look like for these men and women before their time in service? What does it look like after More specifically, what gives them joy, peace, and restoration? This next part's hard because this is is my mindset behind Big Sky Bravery. People always have told me the last six years since I started this, it's not personal, it's business. Those people didn't run a nonprofit. It's really hard not to take something personally when you're running an organization where lives are literally on the line and every single dollar counts. Never, ever let anyone sway your driver passion. Always listen for feedback, but plant your feet and stand firm if you know that it works. As cliche as it may sound, everyone always says perception is everything. I don't know if I agree or disagree with that. But I do know one principle is that you can't win every single game that you play, but you damn sure will lose 100% of those you don't try. And I'm so, so glad I didn't lose this one. An operator once told us, I cannot stress how much Big Sky Bravery helped me other than simply stating that I was suicidal when I arrived. And by the time I left, I wasn't. Now let's dive into the statistics and anecdotal results directly from those who have benefited from our programs to outline what their needs are and what we're doing to try and help. 95% of the operators who came out for our task force found it beneficial, their time out here beneficial to be away from work and family. One operator said, simply put, my time at Big Sky Bravery and all the volunteers and everyone else who helped curate that week changed my life and likely saved it too. I will forever be debt to everyone involved. I will forever be in debt to everyone involved. Think about that. The statistics, the statistics that I went over. This, this person's in debt to us? This next statistic goes over the second core principle of Big Sky Bravery, which was solidifying the trust between civilians and special operations. Before the task force, 36% of respondents, only 36%, were satisfied with their connections to civilians. After the task force, that number more than doubled to 83%. The operator in this picture said, meeting civilians during my week of the task force was a massive eye-opener for me. Until then, I had no idea that Americans supported us 
or frankly even cared. That should break all of our hearts to read that. 90% of respondents or operators are better able to be present in the moment after their task force. 85% had an improved relationship with their children. And 82% had an improved relationship with their spouse. This program allows us to take a step back, one said, and understand what our purpose is. It helps center ourselves and when clear-headedness reprioritize those things in life that we find the most important. As you can tell throughout the speech, it's really hard for me to talk about this without getting emotional. I want you all to know that one idea can spark massive change. This idea has facilitated opportunities for over 200 operators in the last six years to come through our program with hundreds if not thousands on our waiting list waiting to come. So what do I want to leave you with? Here's four W's or four ways that I think each of you can follow the give more than you take philosophy. If this is moving you, if this is sparking something in your life, I hope this helps. Number one, what needs our help? As I mentioned, when I started Big Sky Bravery, there were over 45,000 nonprofits dedicated to veterans in the United States. That was in 2015. Now we're in 2021. Thank God we're not in 2020. Right? Now there's over 60,000 dedicated to veterans, 60,000 nonprofits. I am not saying, trust me, I am not saying to start a nonprofit. But what I am saying to do is be aware of what 60,000 others aren't doing. Despite what some of you might think after I say this, we live in the greatest damn country on earth. Founded on a belief that anything is possible for every single American who wants to go out there and get it. There's no excuses for that. Second, what makes sense? Does something out there need our help? Do we have what it takes? Do we actually want to do it? Third, what drives you? This is the answer that a lot of us are looking for. It's right up there with the secret to life. What is it that has your unwavering attention, that excites and scares the hell out of you at the exact same time, what is it in your life that gives you goosebumps? Fourth and final. This is the hardest one. What are the right reasons? That's my brother-in-law, Jeremy. On one of his 18 deployments somewhere in harm's way, about to bring the full wrath of American justice to all of our nation's enemies. If I could have handpicked a better brother-in-law, there is nothing that would ever, ever compare to Jeremy. He is the most brave, selfless, determined, driven, and humble American I've ever met in my entire life. Sure, I started Big Sky Bravery, and did it for him. But if it wasn't for a man like him, I can promise each of you I wouldn't have had the right fuel for the fire. More importantly, he's with me here today. After 20 years of service and 18 straight deployments in special operations, I want to introduce the world to our vice president at Big Sky Bravery a man who is going to be responsible for changing thousands of lives in this next chapter in his career. World, meet my hero, my brother-in-law, Jeremy. What I'm asking each of you to do is to think Listen, act, learn, and execute. Find something in your life that changes your heart 
the way that these men and women have changed mine. Finally, take the time. That irreversible succession into the future and invest it into something that matters. Now more than ever, our country needs leaders more than followers. Doers more than thinkers. And patriots more than those who just sit idly by. Thank you.